Hello folks, today we're going to take a look at um, advanced masking, particularly for composites. Composite is, is utilizing two or more images and taking parts of those images and putting them together into uh, one singular image. Uh, for assignment two, we're going to uh, work with these set of skyscrapers here and we're going to replace the clear blue sky with um, an image with clouds and a sun. And in addition, we're going to add a plane into this. So, um, so first off, we have uh, we're working on our selection here. Um, I use uh, the polygon tool to get the selection around. Uh, one helpful feature in uh, working with large images with complex uh, selections is to save the selection. Uh, easiest way to save a selection is once you get to a, a good working point, um, like I have here. Um, I can simply right click um, using make sure my my uh, uh, selection tool is uh, is uh, active and I can say save selection and in this case I would probably just call this like partial sky or part sky and then save now I want to turn off the selection for a moment so that way um, we can show you how I can show you how to load it um, Again, using your your selection tool, um, right click and go to the load selection, and then in here there's that part sky. Uh, you can see I've done some other work on this image um, just to kind of facilitate this this lesson. And I say part sky, and there is that selection again. Um, I mean, you can always add to it, and like what I gotta recommend is like you know adding some more to it, make the selection bigger. Um, Again, yeah, when I'm when I'm doing this type of work, I kind of go pretty broad strokes just to get the main parts I need. Again, zooming in close is very uh, very helpful, so that way you get um, nice and tight to the buildings. Again, I do have it um, advised that get your selection as tight as possible first time around uh, because it's easier to do it now than uh, to fix it later. Um, there are ways to fix a selection or a mask in the future, but um, the reason I advocate for doing it to, as close as possible now is that when you, um, if you have to fix a mask and you have several uh, layer masks which are the same mask, so if you're like changing the color of the sky and then changing the density of the sky, you would have separate masks for each one. Um, if you were to wait until later to fix a mask then you would have to fix each and every single one of the mask so um, it's advantageous to basically make this selection as tight as possible um, almost near perfect at this point and then you can find you know just do the fine tuning later as opposed to trying to fine tune everything uh, later in the end so for um, and then again you know I made an extra larger selection here um, let me, I'll just show you kind of a, a tip on how to do uh, curved objects with the polygon tool. Um, the lasso, the regular lasso tool is, is great to go around things, um, but it's, you know, it's a little twitchy when you have your mouse and your mouse and you, if you had too much coffee, it kind of gets a little shaky. Um, the way I resolve doing um, curves is that I usually will, um, let me just add on to this here. I would come in really close and then I would just only go um, just a short distance and make several small clicks so that way I'm kind of tracing it a little tighter and if you really look at this building it's actually it looks curvature but I'm noticing that there's almost like a panel line between each of the window panes so I'm just kind of following that just a little tightly, maybe a little tighter. You get pixel level with that. If you want the hand that shows up, um, just hold down the space bar and that allows you to drag the image a little bit. So there we go. So I'm just going to close that up. I'm going to zoom out. And that's how. Whoops. And that's how you get the uh, the curvature of that building. 
Uh, I'm just going to clean up a little bit more and add to it. And then I'm just going to do, again, what I call the chop job in order to kind of show you some of the things that you'll be looking for when you are trying to finish up this image. You can see that I missed some of that sky between the, just that little edge there, so I'm just going to make sure that's cleaned up. And again, if I double click very quickly, it will go back to immediately to the beginning points, which would be right about here. But I want to make sure that's, that all of that sky is in there. And now I have more of that sky. So I'm going to leave it right here for right now, uh, just to show you how to make the mask part. So, um, anything that you select, the selected part area is going to be what's mask, hidden. Um, in this case, I actually don't want the sky to be hidden. I actually want, um, I want the sky to be hidden, but not the buildings. Uh, but if I were to go ahead and push the button for mask, it would actually leave the sky. So I need what's called the inverse of this. Uh, so, uh, so the selection is going to turn black. And what happened was that when I did this, the mask, which is this this button right here, it turned it uh, uh, it turned everything else black. So I want to actually do the inverse. Select the inverse. The line doesn't change too much, except now instead of going around the sky, it's going around just the buildings. So if I hit the, the uh, add a mask layer, and then what you see here is that here's the mask right here on the layer. It's associated with the image. It is not cutting any of the image, it's actually just hiding the image. So that's what a mask does, it just hides what you don't want to see. Now, as you can, if you notice, my selection does not include parts of the sky and then parts of the round parts of the building. Um, I intentionally did that to kind of show you some things that you can do later. Um, but ultimately, um, here's your mask. And then what you would do is, if you want to bring the other image in, Here's my other image, Got right here. Here's the other image. So most of the time when you open up Photoshop, it comes in the tab format. Uh, but what you want to do is just take it out of the tab. And then you want to be able to see both images. So you can both see both layer panels. You can see here's the image here. Here's the layer panel for it. Um, you just simply want to drag it over here and drop it somewhere on the other image. And in the layer process, you have to understand what is the front of the image and the back of the image. So um, if you were to look from the top down of this layer panel, this is the front of the image, and then this is the back of the image. Um, so in this case, the image is in the wrong sequence. You need to, um, so I want to just pick up this layer and just tr drag it right underneath my building layer. And you can see where that little blue line pops up. It's going to drop right in between the two background layers. And there I have um, the sky, the replacement sky in the background. Um, you might notice I have two background layers here. This one here, the original one, which is turned off. That is just in case um, something happens. I need to go back to the original. Um, I always have a backup plan right here. So the one that I'm working on is the one I'm masking. And then I have a backup just in case. You can go pick up your move tool and then you can move the bottom image again you just need to make sure that the layer is selected so you can move it um, I'm just going to line up nice and fit right up on right up on the image there like that uh, and then you notice that there's you know the sky is not you know adequate here and it should be uh, all of it should be representing the new sky not the old sky um, and I'll show you that in the next uh, next episode Thank you. If you have any questions about this, uh, let me know. Thanks.